What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we're doing something spooky. We are doing another ghost walk from the haunted Orange County. We just did one recently at the Fairhaven Cemetery and we've also done another one in Santa Ana, but today we're doing one in Black Star Canyon. <laughs> now, this one I'm a little bit nervous about, I'm not gonna lie, because I've heard a lot of rumors about Black Star Canyon, a lot of strange things. Things involving Satanism, and cults and lots of rumors. So this one I'm kind of nervous about, but I am excited because I hear that this is like so the big flats. one. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there, there's quite a lot of bugs out here. Also, we have no cell reception. Yeah, And so maybe you guys will never even see this. I'm, this might be a Blair Witch <laughs> video. Like this might be a Blair Witch Project thing going on here. So we're all grouped up right now and we're, uh, we're ready to go on the tour. So let's go, let's go meet our tour guide. His name is Joel and he's barefoot. <laughs> he really, He's really adding to the character. Mm -hmm. well, I can't help but think, as I'm just looking around and there's just nothing, that this is the perfect place to die. The perfect place for like your body to just be hidden, you know, Arl? Maybe this was a bad idea, I don't know. I like how you're saying it like loudly enough for everyone around here to hear. <laughs> the people deserve to know. I want to thank you all for coming out here this evening. My name is Joel, I'm with Haunted Orange County. And this is in partnership with a nonprofit called Naturalist for You. So uh, I will be your guide tonight and also your naturalist. There are a few things I just want to make sure you're aware of, make sure we're all on the same page about what we're doing tonight. Uh, my main priorities are safety, comfort, and enjoyment. All right. So um, first things first, um, we're going to be going uh, about three miles. and. Uh, I'll go 12. Uh, we'll get back here by around 10 o'clock, uh, or maybe a little earlier. It just really depends on the pace of the group. If we can work as a team tonight and make sure that you share and pass down the obstacles. So if I say there's a gully on the left or, or whatever the obstacle is, if you can pass that information down, and hopefully it'll be the same information by the time it gets to the back of the line. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Read about Black Star Canyon. All right, heard about its reputation, rumors, that sort of thing. All right, so um, probably 99% of what you've heard or read is false. Uh, uh, but there are some very interesting things that are true. And some of the things that uh, may be false may have come from some truth. So uh, uh, we're going to investigate tonight, and then I'll let you make your own judgments as to what's actually going on here. Um, but uh, we've had some really strange things happen in the past and some people really freak out. Um, some of our guests actually uh, had their observations uh, have been um, really, really uh, strange and disturbing sometimes. And I will tell you some of those observations, but I'm not going to uh, tell you now. Uh, once we get on the trail, um, we'll definitely talk about that. So, um, and as a naturalist, if you're really curious about the plants, and the wildlife and other things that sometimes are what spook people out, I can actually help you identify things on the trail as well. All right, we're heading out. All right, Arl, looking out for snakes, mountain lions, and holes. I love that our tour guide is barefoot. All natural. You know, this whole area, truly reminds me of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I'm just curious, do you know where we are right now? Santiago. So, oh, very good, Santiago. So if you look at a to topographical map, you'll see that we are in Santiago Canyon right now. So this is Santiago. We're not even in Black Star Canyon yet, um, but I, I know you all want to get there. Um, but the reason I, I brought this up is I happen to know the story behind Santiago, actually, and uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, it involves uh, some soldiers, Mexican soldiers and a man from Spain who was leading an expedition uh, around 252 years ago. So uh, anybody know who I'm talking about here? Gaspar de Portola led all of these soldiers and others, uh, religious types, padres, you know, uh, on this expedition from Baja, California, all the way up to what we now call Monterey. And they stopped all along the way and they were actually keeping diaries of their experience. Uh, and you could read these diaries. They're translated into English. They're quite fascinating. 
And Fray Juan Crespi, he, he kept the most detailed diary, uh, which is very helpful uh, for modern historians to learn more about how this place was back in 1769. By July 22nd, 1769, they had made it just a little further south of here along the coast. Uh, and uh, this particular place, they came to a pool of water and they met 14 friendly heathens, or so they called them. What, what are they talking about here? Who, who, who would be considered heathens from a Spanish? The native people, right? So uh, they're these 14 friendly heathens. And in fact, uh, the Padres noticed, wait a second, um, two of the mothers have what appear to be sick little girls. And so they thought, ooh, what an opportunity, right? Now, what sort of opportunity would this be? Well, this is the new world, and they have a goal, they have a vision for this area, led by another man, his initials are J.S. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Junipero. Serra. Serra, right, right. So, they, they try to communicate with these quote-unquote heathens and say, uh, hey, do you mind if we sprinkle some water on these babies' heads and say a few words? And, and uh, people are like, they don't, they, you know, neither spoke the other's language, but somehow they worked it out and got permission to do this. So what were they doing, in fact? Baptizing. Baptizing, right? So that's the first baptism in this area. So why were they doing this? Why were they exploring this area? Why were they interacting with the local population? Um, what were they, what was the point of all this? What did Junipero Serra want to accomplish? Christianity. Christianity, but how? How would they do it? What? Converting. Converting, but there was something they needed to erect. And they built a whole bunch of them. And so when they were writing in their diaries, they were looking at like, ooh, this is nice flat space. It's near a creek. What did, where were they building? There's one down south and there's one further. The mission, San Juan Capistrano, San Gabriel, and onward, right? So how could they build these giant missions with just a handful of soldiers who are not even trained to build free labor? Wow, what a clever concept. So after baptizing them, they could uh, use them as a workforce and build all these missions and everything, and everything was good, right? Well, the reason I'm telling you this story is because everything was not so good. Um, this whole area was occupied by indigenous people, and the Spanish had regular interactions with them. Uh, but the problem was, once they started building missions, in fact, just two years after the first mission was built, in 1771, uh, at San Gabriel Mission, um, these darn soldiers, they had this problem. Whenever they saw an attractive indigenous woman, they had to rape her. And so they raped a woman, and the indigenous people got upset. I wonder why they got really upset. And so they attacked the mission in 1771. But unfortunately, the Spanish, were better armed, were prepared for, you know, strategic warfare, and these local tribal people had no chance. Um, but the Spanish took it a step further. They didn't want this to happen again. So they got the chief, and they lopped off his head, and they stuck it on a pole and showed it to everybody, and said, you don't mess with us. 1775 at San Diego, San Diego Mission, 600 to 800 of the Kumeyaay tribe attack the mission and start burning all the buildings down and actually kill one of the Padres, Luis Jaime. They were pissed off, right? The following year, 1776 in San Luis Obispo, they attacked that mission and burned the roofs of all the houses and all the buildings. And um, well, the Spanish, you know, they're just sort of in a predicament now, you know, well, uh, we should be allowed to beat these people and rape these people without them revolting all the time. The revolts get bigger and bigger and bigger, the rebellion worse and worse, there's more and more bloodshed all over what we now call California. And uh, finally, one of the worst, or, or the best, depending on how you look at it, um, so a few Chumash people were beaten and forced into labor at uh, La Parisma Mission uh, in Lompoc area, you know, north of Santa Barbara. And the response to this, the Chumash, a very big tribe, well, they got about 2,000 people together and took the mission for four months. But even after all that, they still lost. So it seemed hopeless for the local tribal people, right? And, um, but this is sort of this, this is, 
This is the seed I'm planting in your heads now, these interactions, a lot of them really negative between the Spanish and the local tribes. And uh, we're gonna wander up this canyon while well, Santiago, and then we're gonna find our way into Black Star. Maybe there was a massacre up here as well. I don't know if any of you heard this. Um, but uh, a lot of people suspect that all the hauntings that are happening in this area may stem from that early history. So we're definitely gonna investigate. And there's one last thing I wanted to let you know about. We are at a point where Ernie and I um, had spent some time with two mediums, and these two mediums actually noticed two presences, presences? Two people spending time with us that we could not see, a man and a woman. And apparently the man was dressed in, I would say, late 19th century attire. Same with the woman. The woman had a dark complexion and uh, the man was beckoning us to follow. The woman just seemed to be there. I'm not really sure if she was curious or what was going on with her. Um, so these people and others seem to be sensed by not just mediums, but our guests on our tours on a regular basis. So if you feel like you're being followed at this point, that might be a reason why. I just want to correct, congratulate you. Uh, do you have any idea why? Because we made it somewhere. Black Star Canyon. We are in Black Star Canyon. Um, I, if you're sensing anything at this point, there's there's typically a man right over there listening to, I don't know if you see anything or if you feel this presence, but there's a man listening to our conversation right now. A lot of people talk about that this is the place to see those, you know, and some having some sort of satanic ritual or something like that. Um, more than once we've gone up here and we've encountered uh, pentagrams in the sand. One of the times it was white. So what do you think it was made out of? Maybe salt. Salt, that's right. And uh, it was a big one and there were candles around. We didn't encounter any people uh, uh, yeah, on either uh, case where we saw these pentagrams, um, but that means that stuff is happening out here, right? And, but the name Black Star has nothing to do with pentagrams. It has nothing to do with satanic cults or anything like that. But it's sort of like a, um, I don't know, attractive nuisance in terms of the name. You know, people hear the name and their imagination goes wild, imagination goes wild and they end up coming out here either looking to do something themselves that relates to what they think the name means or looking for somebody else who's doing that. And the name goes all the way back to the 1870s. But in the 1870s, if anybody was practicing the dark arts or whatever, I don't know how prevalent that might have been, um, but that's not what was known to be happening here. Uh, there was something else that was found here. And if you look at that hill behind us, way out there, the one with all the dry grass on it, does everybody see that? Looks like somebody cleared all the vegetation on that slope. Uh, something was found back in the 1870s, early 1870s. Coal. Coal, that's right. And if you think about coal, it's black. And when you heat it up, it blazes like a star, black star. Um, but this deposit here was thought to be the best one. In fact, if you look at newspaper articles from the time, they actually say that this is the best coal, better than Pennsylvania coal. Um, it's, it's, uh, it burns better for blacksmiths. You can heat up, you know, a fact, you can use it for any purpose, really. It's just the best coal. And who knows how true these ads were in the newspapers, but people were flocking to this canyon um, and they were shipping out tons of coal every day. There was at least 900 feet of tunnel in this area. And some of the tunnels, so one shaft went straight down at least 50 feet. Some more on the right. All right, that's poison oak right there. It's starting to lose its uh, color, or it turns from green to red. Mm. It's like bright, vivid red. It's like the reddest plant out there. I thought the leaves were bigger in my head. It depends on where it's growing. So mm. you could have leaves as big as your face, and little leaves as big as your thumbnail. I'm used to identifying it, but uh, it has a pattern of threes. Each leaf is actually composed of three leaflets, so it has this that pattern everywhere. Um, where it's growing, it likes shade and moisture, so it grows near creeks. Where you were talking about the plant? That yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. yeah. Really? When you were climbing over the fence. You were hearing, did anybody else hear the whispering? Yeah, yeah. It sounded like people were whispering. I've never, that's a, a new one. Really? 
Well, and you don't think anybody was hiding in the cr I didn't see anybody. I, that's, I pointed yeah. and I looked like there has to be people hiding over there. <laughs> but that's what I thought you were climbing over the fence. People for. hide all over this canyon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not hiring him to do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so did you hear the whispering too when I get the, got the seeds? And that's then it was weird. like a. Like a... Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're getting deeper into Black Star Canyon and it's getting dark and I'm not gonna lie, it's starting to get a little spooky. So I don't know if you guys can see in the sky. Oh, maybe that one right there, there you go. There's another one, bats. There's bats everywhere out here, it's great. This, this, is, this is where uh, there was a pentagram almost as big as we are around um, and it was made out of salt. And I don't know why they chose this location. Is it because it's the access to the Black Star coal mine? Is there some other reason? That's a mystery to me. But this is where it was. There were melted candles. We didn't see anybody. The weird part was we were hiking up um, and then a firework launched. And then we heard all this these voices and then when we got here there was nobody and we never saw anybody um, so I know it doesn't seem like it's very dark right now but it is I have the ISO on this walk right here this stretch have erupted screaming uh, and they didn't know why uh, two women on two separate tours right around this area when I interviewed them after they burst out screaming they said I don't know this negative presence just crawled all over my back and my neck and I had to scream I just want to show you guys how dark it actually is let me turn the ISO to normal there you go that's normal I'm gonna turn it back up so you guys can see let me get a flashlight so you guys can just see point of reference how freaking spooky it is So we've gone about a mile and a half. I did good. You did good. I did things. <laughs> so you notice that the canyon gets real narrow right here. You have two, two steep slopes, one behind me and one behind you. And if you were to here in the daytime, you could almost uh, see it in the night. There's a trail that runs up oh. behind me here, behind these trees oh. and, go, and gets real steep and leads to a sandstone cave. It's a small one, and it's pretty precarious up there. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going up there at night. Um, but it would only hold maybe three or five people if they all squished together. Um, and if you go into that cave and look across the canyon, there's another cave on the other slope, right across the canyon above the tree line. Now, we're at a pinch point. It's pretty much only one way in and one way out. And you think about it, the, mich the nearest mission is what? 20, 30 miles away, right? San Juan Capistrano, San Gabriel mission. Pretty far away. The city is pretty far away. So if you're a Tongva person and a Hashiman person, a Chumash person, whatever. Oh, somebody's talking to us. What's that? It's a bird. It's a strange bird sound, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a mockingbird. Is that a bird? Who are they mocking, huh? If I were to retreat or escape from basically slavery, from forced labor of the missions, escape those soldiers, those abusive soldiers, this is the perfect place to be, if you think about it. There's a lot of places to hide. And in fact, you could scramble up to these caves and watch everybody that moves in and out of this canyon. I've been up there. I've watched people come up and down this road. I can hear everything that they're saying and they don't even know I'm here. And if, if I need to communicate to a friend or a family member that's also hiding in the canyon, I could make bird sounds. <laughs> or sounds of frogs or crickets, whatever occurs in the area. Because those are my family members, right? 
I have a real intimate relationship with all of them. And this is where a shadow of a man sometimes walks along this boulder behind me <laughs> and watches us as I'm talking. I'm gonna need to verify. These are all. <laughs> all right, we're good. <laughs> these are all things that have been observed on these hikes. That's nice flashlight. Some swear that there are lights coming from the two caves beyond the trees, and some hear voices coming from those directions. A lot of people swear that there are shadows of men wandering around the group, touching people. <laughs> maybe even scratching someone. In fact, one woman pulled me aside after a tour and said when we were right here, something or somebody bumped into her head. And she was so disturbed that she actually wanted to investigate and come back later and figure out what was going on. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a chance right now for five minutes, I'm gonna let you go on ahead beyond where I can see, around the bend there. And I'm going to give you a chance to apologize for the sins of our ancestors. And say hello to all the shadow people that are waiting for us. I'll wait right here. If you're too chicken, you can wait with me. Or you can go. It is so spooky here. <laughs> we lost the group. We need to what? We need Apologize. to. Apologize. The sins of the ancestors. Well, let's do it. So let's apologize for the sins of our ancestors. I apologize. And hello. We apologize for the sins of our ancestors. So like crickets or something. I apologize for the sins of half my ancestors against my and Elliot's people. <laughs> I don't know, can you guys feel any eyes? This is so Blair Witch Project shit right here. a gang um, gang raped a bunch of high school kids mm -hmm. right uh, on Black Star Canyon Road oh, wow. that was that was back I think it was in uh, late 90s or early 2000s oh we got a bike coming see that was something I didn't know was true that sounds like something teenagers would make up the rape? That online. Yeah, the rape and the Yeah, that was in the, the news that was in the newspapers. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they actually got confessions out of the guys and everything. So that's a horrible recent story. Alright now that was fantastic. First of all, shout out to Joel, our tour guide, because he was Chef's Kiss. Really brilliant with his knowledge of nature and uh, just a good storyteller I feel like he really knew his facts and he knew how to just like kind of keep you on the edge of your seat I came in with the expectation that Black Star Canyon had a dark reputation and I am leaving with that as a confirmation like definitely Black Star Canyon has some dark dark stuff that's going on so a lot of the rumors that I've been hearing are, are true are true some of it is fabricated but a lot of it is it's real and that's freaky that's definitely freaky. The Satanist stuff was confirmed, you know, we don't know exactly what was happening. Um, there was definitely pentagrams and uh, like candles, so some sort of ceremony was happening. And that's happened a few times. Um, a lot of death out there, a lot of death, a lot of crime. So I don't know, it was, de it was a spooky, spooky hike. It started off really peaceful with the sunset and <laughs> obviously because it got dark, it, it just became, I don't know, nerve wracking. 
Uh, and you know what was also strange to me was that there were people that were still doing like night hikes and, and night biking, which I totally understand, but it's just like, they have balls of steel. Balls of steel. Some of them are wearing like bells to like make as much noise as possible to keep the animals at bay, the mountain lions at bay. I don't know. That doesn't seem like a good time to me. That seems like a, not horror. a good idea. Horror movie. Horror movie. I've seen too many horror movies, so. Uh, but overall, this was, I think, one of my favorite uh, ghost walks that we've done. It's definitely my favorite. A lot of juicy shit's happening out there. But thank you guys very much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you guys haven't. I post a video every Tuesday. Uh, like is always appreciated. And we will see you guys in the next one.